Welcome back to my quest to find some of the best locally produced food in this county that I'm guessing most people never knew existed. So far tonight we've foraged for sea vegetables, eaten some delicious fresh mackerel from Malston Quay and shown you a really simple way to enjoy a scrumptious chroma crab. But now I'm off in search of an end of summer salad that's to die for. It's a perfect centrepiece for any dinner table. And to find the perfect ingredient, I've headed slightly inland to Fornich Hall. So here we are, a beautiful estate, just a few miles out of Holt um, and just near where I live. Um, they have 70 acres of beautiful pastures and green fields and an amazing house um, that I can't wait to find a little bit more about the nitty gritties and the daily running of this place. So I'm off to find Lucy and see what really goes on here. So this is amazing, Lucy. Like, what is the real story of Fornage? Um, well, essentially, we're here to help adults um, with learning difficulties and special needs, um, and involving them in meaningful work. So, you know, it's, you know, they're helping us here. This is real. It's meaningful. Yeah. We're not just playing in the garden. So. So, how did you then get to to grow an organic and biodynamic vegetables? Um, it's part of the Camp Hill ethos that it's always been surrounded on a biodynamic farm, so a closed organism. Um, so a natural balance of everything is, is all about biodynamics. For me, this is some of the most amazing vegetables in East Anglia. Um, so I'm really lucky to find you guys and, and to know the story behind it just makes us in the kitchen work so much harder to make it shine and sings for itself. So this is all amazing and seeing how it happens naturally is great. Um, but you were talking about some amazing tomatoes? Yeah. Should we go and have a look? Yeah, let's go and have a look. Brilliant. So these are the amazing tomatoes. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. And the smell in here is phenomenal. It literally smells like being in Provence or being in Italy in the mountains somewhere where they're, all the tomatoes are growing naturally. What ones have we got in front of us? Uh, this is Gardener's Delight here. You can see they're lovely long trusses. And they keep going all the way through the summer. So we'll, they, we won't stop harvesting these until about November time. And I love the different variants of, of colour. So like you say, you, you obviously pick that tomato yep. first and then you'd, you'd slowly but surely, by the time this has all been done, you'll be moving on to... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they'll slowly ripen up all the way down to the bottom. So yeah, we just have to wait. Should we pick some for the dish I'm going to do in a yeah, little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Right, so I've just had the most amazing morning with Lucy walking around Fornage Hall. The, the produce has been absolutely phenomenal. And now to be sitting here with a basket full of amazing produce to now build this most simple, easy salad um, just to showcase um, sympathetically how beautiful this produce is and the care and love that has gone into it to produce this salad. So what we're going to do now is just take some of this beautiful lettuce and pop them into a bowl. And we're going to dress these super lightly with a tiny bit of lime juice and soy sauce. You know, the chef's treat, you always get the little nibble bits as you go through anyway. There's a little bit of natural dirt in there, but if you're out and you're growing it in your own allotment, just eat it. You know, it's not going to be... You know where that dirt's come from. You know the love you've put into that, so use everything. So you've got all your leaves in here, beautiful, fresh, beautifully crispy and clean. Tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of soy sauce goes in there as well. And just do a little bit of lime juice. So now we're going to move from the leaves onto our tomatoes. We're going to use a great mix of all of them, including the green ones. Take the tops off, just slice these up. Lovely. And then once they're all sliced, we'll just pop them into a bowl. We're building all these levels of flavour. Like I say, a lot of people won't look at a green tomato. Apart from going in a chutney, they won't look at it and think it's delicious. But I think it just adds such a different dimension to the tomatoes, having a slightly underripe one. So all we've got is some beautiful garlic. We're just going to give a light tap to, like so. A bit worried about the table collapsing, so we're just a light tap. Some sea salt on there as well. So the great thing also about a tomato is the natural sweetness in there. So a great way to get that flavour out and enhance it even more is a little sprinkle of sugar just over your tomatoes, just before eating. Just pop that into the tomatoes. And then just a nice glug of olive oil. If you look inside this bowl, all this variety of colour which just sings late summer. Let's add a little bit of raw onion and some fresh chilli. Mm. 
Lovely. So the onion's on, and now we're gonna move on to the aubergine. I think it's beautiful if you just cure it in a little bit of sea salt for a couple of minutes first. Then we're gonna move on to our cucumber. Slicey, super simple, super easy. And that'll really come through when you eat it. That is all about the produce. There's no other element there. There's no wizardry going on. It's just using great core produce. So as you can see with the aubergine, it's now starting to just blister some of that juices out and on the chopping board, and that's exactly what we want. Just chop these up into some triangles to again, just make them part of the salad. Really simply, just pop them around. And you've got these most amazing French marigolds that are literally being planted in, in amongst the tomatoes as a deterrent against the, the white fly. Had a little nibble and they literally taste like orange zest. So they're gonna add that nice, lovely citrus flavor that we want to finish off the dish. And then we've got these beautiful little borage flowers as well. Um, that just adds that beautiful kind of deep blue color um, that we're looking for. And then these ones, I don't know the technical term to them, but I remember my mum giving them to me when I was younger, calling them snapdragons, because you give them a little squeeze and they start talking to you. But they're a beautiful kind of floral finish to the dish. Purple basil, basil is a perfect accompaniment. Lucy's just come through with some um, rhubarb. And I think rhubarb is one of those um, ingredients that everybody thinks should be used in desserts in a crumble um, in that kind of classic way. But I think it's got a great savory place um, to be on dishes. And to me, this just sings the end of the summer. Just to finish the salad off, put a tiny bit of olive oil, and all that's gonna do is make that salad really wink at you as it comes to the table. So just a little drizzle over there. And there you have it, a really simple salad that just sings all the hard work that Lucy and the team do at Fornage Hall um, on this amazing produce. Um, and all I wanna do is dive in and eat it. So far, I've shown you that often, great local produce doesn't actually need a great amount of cooking. In fact, apart from the chroma crab ravioli, the only cooking we've done is using the acidity of the lime. But for the next meal on the menu, it's time to man up, fire up, and get the barbie going. Park Farm is on the Blickney Hall estate and is home to one of the finest beef herds, not only in this county, but in the whole country. And the cows are really enjoying this uh extra summer period out of grass. Oh, it's and literally uh, the most beautiful place in the, in the world right now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Apart from seeing Dennis. Well, he's, he's, you must never trust a bull, but I, I assure you, he'll be fine. He'll be quite quiet. <laughs> Dennis came from a lovely herd in Lincolnshire, and he'd been shown, and he was a champion at the Royal Norfolk Show. And so we're really pleased to have Dennis as our stock bull and he's a lovely quiet beast, he's a real gentleman. Cattle on the meadows, they're, they're really like little eco-warriors because they're forming, they're helping to create a habitat that's actually very important and not only that because because they're a native breed they produce this fantastic beef which is marbled and got a good even fat covering so that means that the meat can be matured much longer yeah. and therefore give that extra flavour that you're looking for Richard. It's just incredible, like, obviously we have them in the kitchen, but to see them in the field just makes me want to go and do something special with them. They're one of our native breeds, and they're a really easy care breed because they don't have horns and they carve easily, and, and the cows are just wonderful mothers and they're quiet and docile animals and good to handle. So here we are, we're in Tony Bambridge's back garden. As you can hear, it is a working farm, but this is rock and roll. So we're making barbecued feather blade of Tony's beef. What I've got, some feather blade, which is a really great piece of meat, which is cheap to buy. So for a whole feather blade, you're looking at about 10 pounds. It's next to nothing but how much meat you get. If you serve it quite rare, it's perfect. So what we've done is we've just marinated it in some maple syrup, some beer, oranges, and then a mix of spices, which are cumin, coriander, juniper, and some star anise in there. And we've mixed it all around and we've sat it in there for 24 hours till it gets this lovely kind of color of the oranges just started to go in there. And we're just gonna sear that off and serve it quite rare. So I'm gonna go off to the barbecue and get this going whilst Ashley now prepares the coleslaw. So what we've got here, we've just taken our beef out of the marinade. We've got a really nice hot bar barbecue, thanks to Tony, um, ticking over at about 200 degrees. Just gonna lay that on there and let that get that sizzle and that smoke straight into that beef. Lovely, so we'll leave that on for a good eight minutes for it to really start to get caramelized on those bars. If you try to move it too early, it's gonna stick like a mum and you're not gonna be able to get it off and it'll just pull away. 
So what we're gonna do, leave it, um, but the basics of cooking a piece of beef is really simple in the way that you put your first two fingers together and you feel that plump piece of muscle just underneath your thumb. That would be rare. Then we go on to your next finger. That's medium rare, medium, and then go touching your little finger with your thumb, that's well done. And that tenseness that you feel there is exactly how your meat should feel on the barbecue or in the oven. I'm just gonna to quickly talk to you about the potato salad I've whipped up. So all it is is some of Tony's potatoes that have just been lightly roasted off, diced up, and then we've just mixed through some mayonnaise, um, some little cornichons or baby gherkins or capers, and some fresh chives, salt and pepper, and it's just made a real simple, lovely potato salad to go with this beautiful barbecue banquet we're making at the moment. Lovely Ashley, coleslaw's all ready. Yep, all good to go. Good, so just in here, I've had my beef going. I think we're happy with that. It's been going for about 18, 19 minutes, so I'm super happy with that. Let's get that on there for Tony. And now we've got, just had some tomatoes that we just had grilling off. We can just pop a few of them on there as well. And then we've just got some of our potato salad we made as well. And we just finish the beef with a little bit of pepper. Lovely, that's all peppered and ready for Tony to try. Should we go and see what he thinks? Nope. Good. I, must admit, I didn't believe it was going to taste anything like this. <laughs> it really is fantastic. <laughs> You're very kind, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's our duty, really, as chefs, to do something great with it on a barbecue yeah, yeah. or any kind of element, because then it's that full circle of you working hard, yeah. us working hard, to produce this great product yeah, that we're yeah. both proud of. And it's good, I mean, the potatoes are, are, are a really great piece. You've got the chives, the mayonnaise, and your beautiful potatoes. Real simple, but just works beautifully in this kind of outdoorsy barbecue mm. setting, really. And then we've got the coleslaw that Ashley's made that's going to blow your socks off. <laughs> <laughs> you notice I'm just holding back. On yeah, I just see you holding back. So I, right, I, I okay, we better have forward. a go, Ashley. We better have a go. You, you put a lot of love into this, I know. Didn't you? It's delicious. <laughs> well done, Ashley. Thank that's you. good. <laughs> Again, I'm Tony. surprised again. <laughs> I'm so happy you're so surprised at what we've done. <laughs> How long have you been training? <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> We're not half bad now. <laughs> <laughs>